Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. I forgot my last name, but I think I have one. Short video today, kind of more a bit of a psychological video. It's a bit bro -y. It's a bit sort of like hard nose. I think you guys will get a kick out of it. It's about doing what you must and not what you feel like if you're interested in the best results. This is something that just comes up on my Insta a lot and on the YouTube channel a lot. People exchange a lot of these ideas. And I thought I'd sort of throw my hat into the old hat bucket of ideas. You guys ever think like some euphemisms that just like you'd have to Google to figure out why they make sense historically. And people say like, oh, I gotta throw my hat into the race. And the last time I was in a race, nobody threw any hats. Anyway, we're just going to hit you with real shit right up front. There is a big difference, many differences of course, but a big, maybe quintessential difference between children and adults is the following. Children mostly do what they feel like. Adults do some of what they feel like, but also do what they must in order to get the things that they want later, not right now. That is called delayed gratification, and it builds literal empires. You do the tough things that have to be done now to get the things that you want to happen after the fact. Just doing what you want right now often, if not usually, builds nothing at all. But it's fun, which is good for its own sake, and not much more. How the hell does that relate to training? We talk about kids, adults, empires, what the fuck? Well, in training, there are often choices about what is the best thing to do in a given training situation, which exercise to do, how hard to go, when to deal it, et cetera, and the things that you want to do. Now, if you're lucky slash purposeful about it, you can learn to want to do the best things, but sometimes that's an uphill battle. And often, you just have to be an adult in training and choose to do what's right even if you don't want to do what's right, right then and there. What are some examples of what the hell it is that I'm talking about? Stuff you might have to do if you want the best results that you might not want to do at all times. First, doing three reps in reserve at the beginning of a mesocycle. For the love of God, you get your new training program. You've been deloading for like a week, hopefully. You want to crush it and go to failure. I know I do, but I guess science says that maybe two or three or four reps in reserve is better because then you get a really great effect with minimal fatigue. You can build up to your best volumes and intensities and have your best low risk results that way. Blah, blah, blah. I don't have time for less shit. I want to go to failure but maybe it's not a good idea. So there's that sort of split in the road. Shit I want to do that'll be fun now, go to failure all the fucking time, or shit that's a good idea to actually make me better over time, maybe doing three reps in reserve. Another one, taking deloads and actually following through with them. A bunch of you guys, me included, every now and again, like three, eight, three days into a deload, you're like, man, fuck this. This is boring. I already feel quite fine. I'm just going right back into training. And more times than not, that doesn't pay off. Really letting your fatigue come down through a whole deload is the way to set up the best training in the future. And I've tried this with myself, and dozens of other people, Jesus, thousands probably, especially with myself. I've done this thing where I really try to deload much less and then I try to really deload like as much as you're supposed to. And every fucking time I deload how much am I supposed to, the next meso and macro cycle is like God made the shit. I fucking turn into a superhuman animal and just smash all PRs, get super jacked, super lean, et cetera. And every time I cut my deload short, sometimes it works, but almost every time I just like, meh, I fatigue and stall out and things don't go that well. During the deload though, it fucking blows to do it. It fucking blows and it's 100% honest truth. Another example doing multiple sets to failure in peak week. Okay, if you're aligning your volumes and intensities properly, in your peak week, which is the week before your deload, it might say, okay, last week, you got good pumps and soreness and everything doing eight total sets, uh, one rep in reserve for a combination of, let's say, leg extensions and hack squats. And then this time, maybe the plan calls for like 10 total sets, zero RER or failure every single fucking set. Fuck that. I want to train like a pro bodybuilder nowadays. I want to do one top set, one drop set. By the way, 
little industry insight, the number one reason bodybuilders do one top set, one drop set and then switch exercises, because it's fucking hard to do shitload of fucking sets all the way to failure really close and it's monotonous and it's boring, but it makes you jacked probably marginally more jacked than just showing off a little bit. So yeah, it fucking blows through multiple sets to failure every single fucking session of last week. There's a reason that folks have coined that week wheelchair week, right? It is fucking debilitating, but it sets up the growth that you're going to experience through most of your deload week and even further down with all this uh, sort of under underlying hypertrophy work it's doing. It's how you get better is pushing into the limits that you don't fucking want to do. Imagine if a mountain climber thought like the average fucking bodybuilder was, you know, going up Mount Everest, there's like a thousand feet left and it's like, oh, it's really cold and, and it's hard to breathe. Fuck that and just turn around. Like, uh, you don't get your name on the fucking placard of having climb Mount Everest if you do shit like that. But in bodybuilding, you still get some pretty good results not going where you're supposed to, but you get your best results going into that very, very uncomfortable place that you might not want to look at. Another example exercises that you know cause you the best growth and you fucking hate doing them deadlifts. Like, especially for beginners and intermediates, deadlifts fucking build thick gunshot proof backs. Okay. I have like a pretty cool back by whatever standards. And most of it was built through pull-ups, barbell rows, and f shitload of deadlifting. When I became all whatever Insta YouTube famous Dr. Mike bullshit, by then I was so fucking injured that I can't even do deadlifts properly anymore. And the stimulus to fatigue ratio is not that great for me anymore. But as a beginner, as an intermediate, dude, I worked up to 600 pounds for a set of four in the deadlift and other cool feats, tons of deficit stuff. Did I ever like doing deadlifts? I, you know, there might have been like a two or three month phase of my life where I actually liked doing it. Um, I, I fucking hate them. And, and there's tons of exercises I hate, but they have good stimulus to fatigue ratios for me or really big raw stimulus magnitudes that are worth it on a mass phase. You just got to do them. You got to do them if you want the best results, plain and simple. Another one, and this is super common. And this is something very few people fuck up. Sorry. This is something very few people get right painful and humbling ranges of motion. There are two reasons why most people cut their depth on the leg press that explain most of the variance of why they do it. Reason number one, the lower you go, the fucking more it hurts your quads. You're like, ow, oh, fuck, ow, oh, fuck, wait, hold on, what? It just hurts more the lower I go. I don't want any of this pain. I'll just go halfway down. And the other reason is it's fucking humbling because if you go low on leg press, you can't use fucking eight plates and can't wink at that girl on the other fucking machine like, hey, baby, if I can do this eight plates for the partial rum, what do you think I can do to you, girl? Yeah. Clearly, I get laid a lot with lines like that. But I'm not doing that shit, which is why, first of all, I don't get laid. I never speak to women at the gym or anyone for that matter. And also, I'm trying to get fucking in the pain zone and get humbled because that's where the fucking growth happens more. And no, it's not fun to go in and fucking leg press 225 or 315. Like, oh, real talk, real talk. It's easy for me to say this shit now because I'm all fucking juiced to the gills and jacked and even my fucking full range of motion shit is super impressive to most people. What really sucks is if you're a beginner or an intermediate, you're watching this, your full ROM shit's like what the girls are doing. Your full ROM dumbbell curls like 15 or 20 pounds. It's fucking awful to do and look around and God damn it. Like, first of all, these hurt a ton and I look like a fucking bitch trying to do them. And I go, ow. People are like, what are you doing now? It's 20 pounds. And it's, it's so tempting to get the 40s and fucking knock them around and be like, yeah, I'm, I'm a fucking grown man. Thing is, months and years later, you just straight up get bigger biceps, which is, by the way, why you're in the gym, at least I hope so, doing the fucking shit that's kind of humbling and painful. And again, adults do what they have to. Children fucking swing around with the 40s in their first day in the gym. Another one, training muscle groups you hate training. Now, of course, you don't ever have to train anything. You're recreational. Fuck it. But there's competitive bodybuilders whose careers are on the line and they still don't train calves enough. They still don't train traps enough. They still don't train forearms almost ever, even though like their biceps and triceps look big, but you guys look like skinny forearms and like a, um, a front double. It kind of like it kinda throws you off. You're like, mm, I don't know. It doesn't really scream Ronnie Coleman to me. But if you Google like Lee Priest or something, his um, front double by, his forearms are so big. You're like, holy arm. What the fuck? It's Jared Feather, perfect example. Unreal forearms. Makes it look good. Now, Jared Feather's gifted forearms, they've just sort of always been jacked and really responded. Jared still trains his forearms to make him even bigger, however. There's tons of guys without his gifts that don't train forearms. Why is forearm training, you know, I thought that's what jacking off was for. Why, that's why I jack off. But it's, it's some combination of painful, boring, embarrassing, and just 
dumb. Like it's awful. You don't want to talk about it. You don't want to – I even like – I post most of my training on Instagram. I don't even post my forum training half the time because it's like I, even videotaping that shit. I'm like exactly what am I videotaping this for? But I fucking do it. I don't like forum training. Never did. Never will. I still do it because you know what I'm saying? Clearly, I'm not jacking off enough. But on a serious note, I want big fucking forums. And I'm trying to be more of an adult and less of a child, ideally through the rest of my life until I croak. And that's a thing. That's a thing. So in the end, you don't have to do any of these things that I said. You don't have to. You can just go by feel. That's totally cool. But then again, you don't have to be as jacked as you could be or could have been. So next time there's an opportunity to go fork in the road and do with what you feel like that you know is not in your long-term developmental best interest as a person who wants to be jacked and strong versus doing what is in your best interest, at least give it some thought and ask yourself, if I do what I must, will I still love my total involvement in this hobby or sport enough to keep going and trying hard? Because like doing what you must, if it ruins the fucking fun of it, don't do it because you just quit. But if it can still be a bit fun and you can still get it done and if results really matter to you, take the right-hand turn on that fucking road and go down to Gaines Alley and tell him Mike sent you. Oh, boy. I always wanted to finish a video dumb as rocks with that kind of stupid shit. Folks, I'm out of smart shit to say. Maybe I never had smart shit to say. That's for you to figure out and tell me about in the comments. See you next time for the next video.